right. So I have this table of tally marks of how often I've seen each one. Now I need to somehow translate that back into this array. So I'm actually going to start off with a counter that starts at 0 and walk through my table of tallies. So what I need to do is I need to basically take this tally number and assign it into my array. So I'm going to go through and basically go from j and say tally i. So if there's one thing in there, I will take array count, set it equal to this number out here. So i keeps track of the actual number. J keeps track of how many times we've seen that number. And by the way, in here, I need to set add one to count each time. Count is keeping track of where in the array we're at. Wee! How strange that works. So just to, the idea is that we kind of have two steps to table sort. You start off by basically adding one every time you see a particular number. Then on the translation step on the other side, for each of those numbers we've already seen, we put that back in the array. So if I've seen the number one, I put it back in the first thing in the array. Go to the next number in my array. If I've seen the number four next in our example, so I've seen the 1, I've seen the 4 next. I didn't see a 2 or a 3, so it actually skips over those because this um, would be 0. I've seen 0 of 2 and 0 of 3, so j actually immediately ends. I see 4 once, so it goes through, sets array count to that number, adds 1 to count. So tally only walks through my entire list of numbers once, and then walks through my list of tallies once. So an interesting thing about this is that we're actually trading the amount of space we use, because we actually need this extra table, um, for the amount of speed we get out of it. So now comes the part where we actually want to see how fast these things actually work. So before I actually do one of these, let's go ahead and have a variable that keeps track of our start time. Turns out that's a long. And right before I do one of these inputs, I'm going to find out what the current time is. So you can find that out by getting the current time in milliseconds from system. When we're done, what I'd like to do is print out how much time it actually took. Um, let's see. I eventually need to put this in the output file, so let's go ahead and make a variable that keeps track of that. So. Actually, let's call this not final time, but total time. So this will be system.currenttimemillies, which is the new current time after I've done one of these sorts up here, minus whatever my start time was. And by the way, current time millies is the amount of time it's taken since some date in 1970, I think. Uh, it turns out there's a lot of seconds between our milliseconds between now and then, but longs can hold a very large number, so it's fine. So here, let's just find out what, the, what is in there. And I'm going to comment this out for the moment so it's easier to see what my output actually is. Total time. One input, bubble. Total time is one millisecond. That makes sense. Let's try and put two with a bubble sort. 273 seconds. Cool. Let's try and put three with bubble. Hmm, this is taking considerably longer. 
So by the way, the uh, input files are 10 times as large each time that you go up to the next input file. So the first one is 1,000 numbers. The second one is 10,000 numbers. The third one is 100,000 numbers. And you start to get the idea. There we go. So that took 28 seconds. Interesting. OK, so what about selection sort? How does that do on the input? Six seconds. That's considerably different than 28 seconds. Hmm, it's almost like it matters which way you do it. All right, so what about table sort? Two milliseconds. Wow, that's some difference. Um, so this hopefully gets you an idea of what's going on with that. By the way, the last thing we needed to do was actually um, put things into an output file. So this for loop has got approximately what I want to do, except that I need to, instead of printing this out to system out, I need to make this in an output file. So let's see. File, output file is new file output.txt. And actually, I need this to go into a print writer now that I think about it. So I'm going to write it to a particular print writer write out my big string with commas between it, and then print it out. So print writer pw is a new print writer, which takes a new file writer, which takes a new file. Import print writer, input file writer. And it's complaining because it's like, what happens if it's not there? So we're going to surround it with a try catch. And if for whatever reason it cannot create a new file named output.txt, I don't know, the hard drive's full, whatever. We're going to print that out and then game over, system exit. Exit terminates the program immediately, by the way. OK, so now we need to take and create a string for our output. And output is going to be whatever it was before, plus input array i. And hey, let's throw a comma on there. It'll automatically convert that to a string, so we're golden. And then the final thing we need to do is um, let's put a return on there. Backslash n is the special thing for return. And let's also put total time plus total time. And then we finally need to pwis ah, is created here, but it's in the try catch. So I need to declare it outside of it and create it there. pw dot write output. Does this need to be in the try catch too? Yeah, it probably does. So let's go ahead and move all of this stuff in the try catch so it just takes care of that. And finally, we, in order to actually save the file, you have to close the print writer. That actually saves the file, and there you go. So I'm going to go out here, say input 1, do a bubble sort, time took 0. And if I go look at my sorted thing, Let's see, where is my sorted thing? Workspace, sort. Hey, look, output.txt. Hey, look, it's numbers in order. And at the very end, it says total time. All right, hopefully that gets you through everything you need for sorting numbers and gives you some sense of what's going on. Um, if you want to do extra credit, you should look at something called quicksort. Quicksort is a, another sorting algorithm that uses something called recursion. And it is in between the speed of selection sort and table sort. So there's a series of um, divide and conquer sorting algorithms that do that. So merge sort and quicksort are part of those. Hopefully that gets you what you need to do through the sorting assignment.